Hey YouTube, welcome to TCTN, the crazy troll nation of YouTube, the crazy just because I am sometimes, not intentionally, and troll because I consider myself a troll, a cute troll, but a troll nonetheless. This video, yep, yeah, it's about BDSM stuff. Um, there's some discrepancies in the community and I just chalk it up to people just being people. I think I might have spoken before about how people say, oh, I want to meet like-minded people. And it's like, are we really that like-minded? Because the same people who are not in the BDSM or King community are the same people who are in other communities. People are people wherever they go. And so there's still biases. There's still discrimination. There's still, um, you know, discrepancies and behaviors. And there's double standards and things like that. And one of the things that, I'm always conflicted about our POC events. Um, this is fitting, this is Black History Month, right? And I'm actually writing an article for my website about this very topic. And I'm always torn when there's POC events. I understand that there, and this is why I'm torn. I understand that there's a need for people of color to have a space wherever they decide to be, whatever type of community, if it's the BDSM community, if it's a book club, if it's, you know, a board game club, if it's a writing group. I mean, I understand that, that people of color, we desire to not be seen as different. We desire to just fit in wherever we go. If we're going to a writer's club, we want to just be accepted as a writer. Color shouldn't make a difference. Um, but there is this thing where um, some people don't feel welcome. And it's the same for, you know, the queer community as well. There's places they go and they don't feel welcome either. But that's a whole another topic, which is similar to this one, in that sometimes people just don't feel like they fit in or they go places and they don't feel comfortable. Um, and there's always someone who's an ass that'll go out of their way to just show that they're an ass. And so that's just, in general, and that's just in life. And I think because people assume, as I did, that the King community, we all do this thing that society, family, religion says we shouldn't, that we'll all just be one big happy family. And we're not, for the most part. And, I mean, you find your you find your people, you find your tribe, as they say. But as a whole, there are still so many things wrong. And over the last couple of years, there's been more talk of how to be more inclusive of POCs and there's only really one organization that I can think of off the top of my head that intentionally strive to show that they're inclusive by adding pictures on their website. Like all of the group pictures on their website includes multiple people of color. Like when you look at their website pictures, there's a range of genders and nationalities. They intentionally do that. Other organizations, I think they just don't think about it. And it's like whoever's here or whoever's on the board or whoever are the most active members, okay, come on, let's take this group picture. And they don't realize that it's all just the same, you know, the same complexion people in the picture. And when other people see that and they're thinking, oh, I want to go to this meeting and they look at the website and they're like, but there's nobody who looks like me. So I'm not going to go because I don't think I would be welcomed. And you may or you may, may not. And so for me, I'm like, well, just go and see. You know what I mean? And so there's been new events popping up for POC things. Um, and I've been invited <laughs> to these events. And I'm, I'm just torn because I feel like, you know, this is 2020 now, right? And again, I recognize that there's a need for POC people to have a space where they feel safe, a space where they feel welcomed, a space where they can go and people look like me and they understand you know my struggles and you know we can chit chat about you know oh i had this experience too we can console each other we can encourage each other at the same time though if we're secluding ourselves into our own poc group how is that helping to integrate into mainstream groups and organizations and so that's why I'm torn because I'm like we've come far like civil rights movements and you know when Malcolm X was here and Martin Luther King Jr. was here things are a whole lot better than you know in the 50s and 60s and even the 70s 
However, there's still a lot more room for growth. Like, why are do why do some POCs still feel like they're such an outsider or not welcomed after as far as we've come? And it just reminds me we still have a far way to go. Um, just as just as a nation of people, period. And so I'm always torn. I know this the space is needed, but how do we rectify the situation? If we say we're not going to go here because we don't feel welcome, well, how are they going to see that you want to be welcomed if you're creating your own little pocket over here? You're saying they have a pocket. They may realize they're in a pocket. They may not realize it because some people are just really oblivious. So whether they realize they are or not, if you create your own thing over here, they're going to be like, oh, well, they're good. They got their own thing. It's like the separate but equal thing. You know what I mean? It's so... I, 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 I don't know what the answer is. And so a new group that started up, you know, I was talking to my partner and I'm like, well, I won't know how it is until I go. Cause in my mind, it's like, okay, you go and you just gripe and vent and rant about the issues, which we all know the group is only four POC people. We all know what the issues are. So I'm like, what are we going to talk about? Just complain about the issues. Like what's the resolution? Is, is this a solution? Us just coming together as a POC group and talking about it? Like what? I don't know. And so for me, I go to different places. I go to different things. I go to different conferences. I go to different groups. I go to different munches. I go to different meetings because for me, it's about just showing up. And if somebody's uncomfortable with me being there, they just have to get used to it because I'm here. I'm going to represent as a person of color. I'm going to represent as a woman. I'm going to represent as a female master in, in the leather community and in the MS community. So for me, that's the answer is just to be there and not be like, I don't know if they'll accept me, so I'm not going to go. Like, how are people going to get used to us if we're not there? And also be on your best behavior. I'm not saying, like, I grew up in the inner city, so I can be like, yo, motherfuckers, how y'all doing? But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to go in and be like, hi, <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> and then after I get to know people, I'm like, yeah, what's up, motherfucker? But anyway, <laughs> welcome to the crazy. But for real though, so I, there's a time and a place for everything. You know, my homegirls, I talk one way. You know, when I when I was working before I retired, you know, you act another way. So you go places, you act professional, and then you hang out on the block, you act a different way. So it's not like you're still not being yourself. You just not. Like when you go to a wedding, you dress up. When you don't go to a wedding, you're in flip-flops and, and shorts. So it's just <laughs> it's just a, a, another part of your life, a different element that you're involving yourself in. And so what are, what are you guys' thoughts? Um... And I don't want to say within the King community for POC stuff, even though this is titled for BDSM, so people might not even watch it because they're like, I don't want to hear about BDSM. But it's, you know, the community as a whole, just life in general, or, um, oh, this is a sad memory. It was very upsetting. <laughs> I was with my partner and we were walking past a bar and we were looking for some place to eat and I looked in the window and it gave me a flashback of an Irish pub I went to like when I was in my 20s and when I walked in like the looks I got I was actually afraid for my life and it's like you can hear a pin drop and everybody was just like and I just turned around and walked out and I had that feeling now that happened in my late teens this incident happened <laughs> last year in 2019 and i remember saying to my partner i'm not going into any bars in this neighborhood to to eat or to get anything to drink and he didn't say anything and i knew he didn't get it and when we we found somewhere else to eat and when we came out there were people outside that bar and this guy it was four um caucasian whatever they were non people of color i'll just say it that way because i don't know what their nationality was um there were was it three three or four standing outside talking one of them, and my partner and I are holding hands and we're walking down the sidewalk. One of them intentionally <laughs> maneuvered himself directly in my line of walking, like directly in front of me and turned his back to me. And so I had to like kind of bump my partner a little bit and he moved over and then I moved over for me to walk around this guy. And in my mind, like I knew what it was because they were just talking and he like, and just, <laughs> and I'm just like, and so we're walking and one of them says, oh, actually my partner says, excuse us. And I was just like, and I felt my blood pressure rising and I was just so angry. Like, what did I do to you? You know what I mean? And one of them said, oh, anything for my redheaded brother. And that pissed me off even more because I'm thinking, 
If anything, for your redheaded brother, respect the woman that he's holding hands with, walking down, down the street with. If anything, for your redheaded brother. So what that told me was that he knew exactly, and I don't know which one said it because we had walked by, so they were behind us at this point. But what that told me was whichever one said it knew exactly what he did. And they were telling him, we recognize you and respect you. We'll excuse you because he's the one that said excuse us. But still, for me, it was just like... And I was so, oh my gosh, I was so upset. And even my partner got upset. He was just like, I don't know. And I, and I was just like, babe. And so we talked about it in the car when we got back to the hotel. We were up for like another two hours, like talking about the situation. And so it's been an eye opener for him. He calls himself an English mutt. He's like English, um, Scandinavian, <laughs> German. <laughs> It's something else. So he calls himself an English mutt. And so it's been enlightening for him being with me and seeing the different types of things that happened to me. Just me just doing nothing, just walking down the street holding his hand. And, you know, different experiences in different stores. And he's been with me and he'll be like... <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's good that he's, he's, he's aware and he's becoming more and more aware um, of how there are discrepancies just based on skin tone. And, and I know I went off on a rant on this. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. So I just said all of that to say, just in general. So this really isn't about um, BDSM. So I may just take BDSM out the title. What are your thoughts on POC events or POC conferences or POC meetings where only POCs are welcome to attend? And what do you guys think the answer is as far as, and I hate to say integration because like we're all people. So like, why are we excluded in the first place? But what do you guys think the answer is? And just all of us just being people and being recognized as people and not recognized for what our skin looks like, which is outside of our control anyway. So it's like dumb to me that people even have those prejudices and biases. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Let me know. I'm looking forward to reading them. And thank you for listening. <laughs> to me go on and on about this and you will see me in the next video. Bye.